Hey guys, and welcome to The Bridge. I'm Jenna from DeKalb School of the Arts. And I'm William from Columbia High School. We've got a great show for you today, with special performances and yes that you don't want to miss. And in our kickbacks, we'll be talking about... What was that? What William is trying to say is that in our kickback, we're talking about censorship. Right, William? Vacuum mashed potatoes! What? Oh, so I can say that. Um, we're going to go before William is censored again, but I hope you stay tuned and enjoy. have a spectacular performance from Judson Orville. So, let's kick it to him. Performing a spoken word piece. Please welcome Judson Orville. Hi everybody, doing? I would like to say a poem I made. Okay. They say the first impression is the best impression, but the last impression is the deaf impression. And they don't show you love to your box day reception. And they'll yell, long live, till the world respect it. Modify eulogy. How many deaths will it take so the youth can see? A bully ain't got no name. He can either take you and me. Or kids on the corner selling marijuana and try to sell it to the other kids so they become stoners. Some kids want to be cool, but ain't got no money, so they become loners. Shh, whisper, will I beg to differ? Or kids smoking eyes turn red like Clifford. Clifford, the big red dog, I see it all, but if the police ask questions, shh, don't get involved. It take time for the world to evolve. Or kids kill kids over jealousy, R.P. to Paul. But black people, still black people, they don't see it at all. When I rise, I'm happy. They just wanna see me fall. All right now, back to reality. I'm on my P's and Q's with my award. It's late, fashionably. But if a black guy catch 80, say, I never thought this could happen to me. But it's my mistake, and I got to die and float to the sky. Where is gravity? I'm too young to die, but I can only question why I'm laying in this bed and my soul's about to fly. But soon the world will just put aside their egos. They can't escape the cycle. Life is not a game. Put your mind in a mindful environment. The violence is higher than the system. USA, there's nothing more to say. The violence is critical. We stand here while the physical, the world is coming to an end. But we should have been doing more in Atlanta, a different color bandanas taking over the young minds of the world. It's absurd. We live on like we crazy, but most of us is 15 having babies. It's crazy. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes. That was a great performance. Thank you. Thank you. So what can you tell me? Where do you get your main motivation for your um, spoken word pieces? Um, I get my main motivation basically off like what happened to people our skin color or in our generation how people was dying and kids are losing their life off of uh, mediocrity or ignorance. And where do you plan to take your poetry? Um, as far as I can, I have been in many um, different settings with my poetry. I've been on NBAF, the National Arts Blacks Festival. I have done many talent shows and I plan on attending Nichols College in the fall for football. Wow, that's great. Thanks again for that great performance, All right guys? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 
Hey everyone, welcome back to Take Flight with your host, Latricia Elliott. And sitting with me today is my co-host, Micah Davis. And today we are here to provide you, the viewers, with 10 amazing facts about different countries that share the earth with us. Without further ado, today's listed country is none other than New Zealand. Let's get started. Well, New Zealand was undiscovered and completely devoid of human beings no more than 800 years ago. A long time. New Zealand is the fastest country in the world to start a business. One day. I need to go there when I start my business. Well, in World War II, the United States and New Zealand secretly tested 3,700 tsunami bombs designated to destroy coastal cities. Boom. <laughs> it's illegal for drug companies to advertise directly to consumers almost anywhere in the world except in the United States and New Zealand. That's, that's terrible. We shouldn't um, show drugs to people. The least corrupt countries in the world are New Zealand and Denmark, according to the Corruption Perception Index. The logo of the Royal New England Air Force is the Kiwi, a flightless bird. It's a cute little flightless bird, too. It's that's very a cute. song. New Zealand banned all advertising on Christmas Day, Easter, Good Friday, and Anzac Day. There are giant carnivorous snails that live in New Zealand. God, I, don't know. I was thinking about going there, but now I'm scared of snails, so I'm not gonna, probably not going to go there. In 2006, an Australian man tried to sell a New Zealand on eBay. The starting price was at one penny and managed to reach 3000 Australian dollars before e eBay closed the auction. Money. Of the currently independent and modern countries, New Zealand was the first to allow women to vote. It sounds like they're very progressive. Uh, obviously. Well, well, guys, that was 10 amazing facts that are unique to New Zealand, and I hope you guys learned something new today. See you next time on Take Flight. Hey, everyone, and welcome to our kickback on censorship. Is it good or is it bad? Hi, I'm Nathan from Family High School. I'm Jenna from DeKalb School of the Arts, and today we're here with Mr. Jeff Dickerson, a communications consultant. So... Mr. Dickerson, um, what is censorship? Well, censorship is not being able to do what you want to do or say what you want to say, and it's usually prescribed by a government or a government agency. So there are countries all around the world, as you all well know, where you can't write what you want to write. You can't you can't express yourself the way you want to express yourself. There may be all kinds of censorship. There may be censorship of opinions or uh, journalistic liberties or religion. Awesome. So how do you guys feel about censorship? Um, I think censorship in many ways can be good, especially if we don't in want to insult anybody. But when it's censoring your own public, you know, personal opinions because they don't want to start other, pe want to have other people thinking the same way, I think that's kind of bad because we should all be able to be exposed to as much information as possible so we can have our own opinions. I think it can also be tricky in the sense of what people believe compared to what's politically correct. Take for example, I guess Raven Simone on the View. I personally don't agree with her statements. A lot of people I know don't agree with her statements, but still, does that make it wrong that um, she shouldn't be allowed to express what she believes, whether it's considered polit politically correct or not, or whether or not it hurts so many people or it's considered valid? Well, there's like, there's a time and a place where um, things can be said, and that's where I think we think when America that is just you can say whatever you want, but I believe there's small amounts of censorship that's very small that you don't notice it. Maybe like what kids shows is censored because you, they're not talking about adult topics on a kid show. So it's censored in a way to where it's appealing to that audience that it's talking about. So it's, it's, it's small censorship, but that's, it's good censorship. But yeah. sometimes in kids shows they have like jokes for Yeah, they throw scenes. in jokes like, like that oh. that the adults may get, but <laughs> it, it, they tend to keep a, like a lid on PG. it. But it, there's good and bad censorship though. Well, isn't that just being appropriate for an audience? 
right? You know, so there, you know, let's take the movie Shrek, for instance, where there are a lot of adult jokes in the movie, but you're there with your five-year-old who doesn't get those jokes, but really enjoys the animation and the interaction in, uh, between the characters and things like that. Is that censorship? Or is that just sort of tailoring a message for your audience? That's a good question. What? Okay, this is a question for you. Do you think when there's too much censorship in like in a country or whatever, does is creativity lost or is like freedom lost as well? I think the freedom is lost a great deal when you can't express yourself the way you'd like to. It, can, it may be lost in a lot of different ways. It might be artistic right or in artistic expression so that's creativity it could be writing and that's a form of creativity i mean you all are fortunate enough i think and i hope that you believe this to live in a nation where you can express yourselves to the fullest now does that mean that we just get to say whatever we want to say whenever we want to say it you know there was a recent uh, presidential debate where one of the candidates was asked you know do you have to use profanity is that a form of censorship? Or should he be able to, to, to use profanity in the middle of a presidential debate? What do you all think? Well, I think you shouldn't. No, you're a president. You're not supposed to be just cursing all the time. I mean, not that's even. how you don't talk to world leaders. I mean, but just because you curse, in a sense, that doesn't mean that you're unintelligent. I think maybe it may not be the smartest choice because children may be present, but as far as deciding whether or not he's a good president based off his language, I don't think that's very... I, but I think in a certain me. area, you're supposed to talk a certain way. Politically correct? I mean, a president should definitely be politically correct. Well, why yes, but also it depends on the type of cussing. Like, if it was just casual cursing, then I don't think that should be allowed. But if he was talking about a social issue where maybe somebody said something that was a curse word or talking about race or something like that, and it was relevant to what he was saying, then maybe I don't think that we should be so quick to judge if it brings about a change that's good. Why should we censor ourselves based on society standards in comparison to what we really feel in the moment? Well, because we don't want to be disrespectful to anybody else who feels a different way. I know, but still, we should have the right, like freedom of speech, you know? Yeah. We should be able to express that with no judgment or but it's any like fear required. fire when the building's not burned or burning at all. You can't, I mean, you, you have a certain limit to freedom of speech, you know? There should be a balance, yes. you know? Too much of anything, even vegetables. Too much vegetables <laughs> is bad for you. So, like, too much of anything can be bad for you, but too little of it can also be bad. So. Yeah, you just want to be careful not to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you can cross a line when it talks about like when it comes to saying your opinions. Yeah, especially if it's not asked for, don't, don't yeah. say it. Everyone should also keep respect in mind, always. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, you should never be afraid to say how you feel because if people were afraid, we wouldn't be living in the world we live in today if they were That's afraid so to true. stand up and So probably in a society in. like ours where you don't have a lot of censorship and you can really express whatever your thoughts happen to be or whatever your art happens to be or whatever your writing happens to be, um, that you have to really consider um, uh, the issue of civility. Are we having a civil conversation? Are we being respectful of others as we express our views? Or, or do you all see a distinction between censorship and just civility and, and, and having respectful conversations while also expressing yourself to the fullest? Yeah. It just, it's just being taught how to express yourself in certain arenas. Cause mm -hmm. How you talk to your friends is not, definitely not the way you're going to talk to your mom or your dad. Right. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's just about being respectful. So what about censorship when it comes to movies? Now, there's a clear case where there's some censorship, right? Because we've got these ratings, and I don't know how old you all are, but if you're not 17, you're not supposed to go in there and see that movie. Isn't that a form of censorship? Do you think that that's a legitimate form of censorship? Yes, yes it comes to just safety. Uh, first and foremost, safety comes first. Right. And then if you just wait, you can buy it on DVD. It's, it's like a big, it's like... Um, a big warning label. It's like that's like with um, video games as well. They put the rating. That's to tell, exactly right. Um, how old are you supposed to be to play the game? I mean, right. most people 
uh, they either too young to play or really old to play. Right, right. And it's no middle ground with it either. Right. But, um, it's more like a warden label. Is telling and so you. that kind of censorship is really more age based, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because it's it's trying to protect young people from very adult topics, right, or adult activities. Well, I tell you what, Mr. Dickerson, that's a really great thought that you have. But uh, we're running out of time. We really appreciate you coming in, and we really appreciate your expertise. Well, thank you. song the law and order that is my jam but you oh wait you know what why do we park in driveways and drive in parkways have you ever heard about the constant wars that keep going on between america and some of our foreign countries back in our day you really had to tick us off for us to go to war but now I drop a pencil in the wrong direction and boom, they drop a nuke on my country. But, I mean, back when I was in Vietnam, or was it Nova Scotia? No, it was Iraq. No, wait, it was Afghanistan. Well, forget what it was, it was war. And it was that real war, it wasn't that silly nanny, I'm gonna stay behind and stay in the reserves. I was drafted when I was 12 years old, people. I don't even know how old I am now, but that got to be a long time. Stay off my lawn. Hi, my name is Nina and I go to the Cap School of the Arts. Today on Cheat Codes, we'll be doing codes in the kitchen, which are a few little tricks to help your meals be tastier and to help you out in the kitchen. Now, we need to get all of our ingredients together. Let's say if one of your ingredients are in a jar, but you can't get it open. What you use to open it and get a good grip on it is a rubber glove. All you have to do is twist to open, and there we go. (laughs) All right, now I know you're thinking, what about the butter? Um, If you don't wanna use um, to, you know, get your butter soft and you don't wanna put it out and just leave it there, you can always use a cheese grater. Now, what you do is you go to the deeper side and you just grate your butter and it's all shredded and softened. Now, I know you're thinking, what about the eggs? To check if your egg is fresh, you basically need to drop it in some water. If it sinks, it's fresh. If it floats, you might wanna get some more eggs. The higher it floats, the older the egg. Now, when you're cooking, you might think that things tend to boil over. What you do is use a wooden spoon. You put it on top of your pot and the spoon will you know, absorb all the moisture and things won't boil over at all. Now that we're done cooking, we need to get all the leftovers. If you don't have any aluminum foil or any plastic wrap, just use a clean shower cap. You place it over your pot or over your bowls with your leftovers and stick it in the fridge. It'll keep everything fresh just like a normal wrap. Now, if you got a microwave and you got some tough dirt that just won't come out, mix vinegar and water and place it in a bowl and microwave it for just three minutes. That way, it'll loosen up your dirt and you have a clean microwave. That's all the time we have for today. This is Codes in the Kitchen on Cheat Codes. I'm Nina. See you later. Three, two. Hi there. My name is Zion, and I go to Columbia High School. Hola. I'm Tatiana, and I go to Lithonia High School. Today on What's the Move, we'll be assisting you on how to write the effective college admission essay. Please don't remind me. Doesn't it have like 700 words or something? Okay, okay. Even though the common essay minimum is 250 words, with no upper limit, every admission essay reader has at least over 100 essays to read. He or she only intends to read for only a few minutes. So if you do go over 700 words, pal, you're pushing it. Phew, that's a big relief. So what about me personally? I mean, I was only treasurer of the chess club. Well, this one is for everyone. Don't brag about your accomplishments. It's perfectly okay to treasure of the chess club. Not everyone is the star. It's perfectly okay to be honest. Well, this one is for you, Zion. Write about one subject at a time. What's that supposed to mean? Don't try to cover everything in one essay. It can make you sound scattered, unorganized, and superficial. Guess what? I got one for you, too. Be accurate. Whatever. This doesn't just mean spelling check. This means correct punctuations when writing commas, semicolons, etc. Make sure you use nouns, adjectives, verbs, and much more. 
Yeah, whatever. You're only saying that because you graded my essay that one time in fourth grade. Better late than never. Another thing, be likable. Many or maybe all of them see themselves as small communities where their students have to get along with their peers, whether it's in a dorm or in a classroom. Well, I think we've given them enough information today. We hope this helps. Yep, that's all we have for today. See you next time on What's the Move? Hi everyone, my name is Corey and I go to Southwest DeKalb High School. This is Parenting 101 and today we have a question from a talkative mom. She says, my daughter has a new boyfriend and she is in love. She talks about him every time he gets home, off the bus, before school, after school. What can I do to make sure that I don't have to hear about this boyfriend anymore? <laughs> well mom, we all remember what it was like to have that first boyfriend. It's an exciting time in a teenager's life. So encourage her, talk to her about it, because obviously it's important if she wants to talk to you, but also make sure she understands the risk of having a boyfriend and make sure she understands the importance of balancing school and all her other activities as well as having a boyfriend. I think that it's a good thing that your daughter wants to talk to you about her boyfriend. Maybe you should talk to her about your first boyfriend and your experience or your experience with your husband. Or it might be a good idea to go on dates with you and your husband and her and her boyfriend. That's what my parents did with me when I had my first boyfriend. But as long as she stays vocal, you shouldn't be worried about the situation at all. That's all the time we have for Parenting 101 today. I'll see you guys next time. Up next, we have an 18-year-old student from Athonia High School. Performing Read All About It, please welcome to the stage, Maya.